Your Life in Sex Island, Chapter 4, Illustrious Immigration, page 88. Do we have the will to destroy the economies of the states to our immediate south? This is from CIA and Assassinations, the Guatemala 1954 documents by Kate Doyle and Peter Cornblaw. Arbenz was elected president of Guatemala in 1950 to continue a process of socio-economic reforms that the CIA disdainfully refers to in its memoranda as an intensely nationalistic program of progress colored by the touchy anti-foreign inferiority complex of the Banana Republic. That's from the CIA. The first CIA effort to overthrow the Guatemalan president, a CIA collaboration with Nicaraguan dictator Anastasio Somoza, to support a disgruntled general named Carlos Castillo Armas and codenamed Operation PB Fortune, was authorized by President Truman in 1952. As early as February of that year, CIA headquarters began generating memos with subject titles such as Guatemalan Communist Personnel to be disposed of during military operations, outlining categories of persons to be neutralized through executive action, murder, or through imprisonment and exile. The A-list of those to be assassinated contained 58 names, all of which the CIA has excised from the declassified documents. In other words, even after 40 years, they refused to open their files or to confess to their crimes. PB success authorized by President Eisenhower in August 1953 carried a $2.7 million budget for psychological warfare and political action and subversion among the other components of a small paramilitary war. But according to the CIA's own internal study of the agency's so-called K program, up until the day Arbenz resigned in June 27, 1954, the option of assassination was still being considered. While the power of the CIA's psychological war, codenamed Operation Sherwood against Arbenz, rendered that option unnecessary, the last stage of PBS success called for a roll-up of communists and collaborators. Although Arbenz and his top aides were able to flee the country after the CIA installed Castillo Armas in power, hundreds of Guatemalans were rounded up and killed. Between 1954 and 1990, human rights groups estimate the repressive operatives of successful military regimes murdered more than 100,000 civilians. That's the end of the quote. My employees withheld this information from me for over 40 years because they considered me too stupid and unpatriotic to understand why they would murder a duly, freely elected Republican president and install a criminal regime. But we know why they murdered over 100,000 people. Wait for it. Wait for it. So I could have 20 cent bananas. Yep, we did it so that our fruit importing companies wouldn't lose any business or have to pay any significant labor costs. Come, Mr. Tallyman. Tally me banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. A six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight, come, and me one, go home. That's Harry Belafonte's take on a Jamaican boat song. It's a sad, sad song. In the next 50 or 60 years, there has been one brutal gangster regime after another, thanks to me and my employees. We have killed lots and lots more than a mere 100,000 using our trained death squads and through the more prosaic starvation and sickness. Our compliant corporate press and other media played this as a great victory over the red atheistic menace. Fake propaganda newsreels were produced and played at almost every theater between feature films. I remember seeing several. Our hero, 
we stop the spread of atheistic communism and install a pro-American Christian murderer. All the moneyed religions applauded and no one has ever apologized. What we did in Guatemala, we also did in most of the other Central American countries. To me, it is exceedingly sad that when they had good governments who were improving almost every aspect of their lives and economies, you name it, increased literacy, improved health care, more diverse economies, more press freedom, etc., we sent in, quote, freedom fighters, unquote, and the like murderers and monsters to destroy whatever progress was being made. Oh, we are so good at that. And when we commit major crimes of this sort, we keep it secret in the name of national security. So yes, we have the will, the means, and the power to destroy the economies of the states to our immediate south, and in fact, did. Purchase the book now by clicking on the link in the description below.